From the Ticats Audio Network, this is Task and Twos. Welcome to Task and Twos. I'm Luke Tasker, and he is Andy Fantuz, and we are wrapping up the 2021 season after the Ticats' heartbreaking loss, 33-25 to Winnipeg in overtime. Andy, man, that was just, first of all, an unbelievable week, like a like an and like a truly memorable week of, of as a CFL events and Ty Cats family and all of that. But uh, Sunday was was a really really tough night. That was that was a sad one. Oh, man, I I, I was uh, even as early as or as recent as 20, 20 minutes ago, I was I was crying just thinking about. I was thinking about this show and I'm thinking about uh, I started thinking about the game and I, I got teary eyed again. And this one just hits me hard, man. I've been, I've been part of some, some tough gray cups and, and I'm not even on the team <laughs> this year. <laughs> and for me, this one really, really hits uh, just feel so, so bad for, you know, the, the team. They're so close, so many different plays that could have went, one way or the other, the, you know, the whole organization, the city, the fans, but, but you're right, man. Like what a, what a week, like, <laughs> are you recovered? <laughs> Dude, you know, what's crazy. I got, I mean, uh, literally five nights in a row, it was after 2 AM. And I, like, I felt like I could just keep doing this forever, which I don't know how that's possible. But when I got home on Monday, like like I was just holding it together with gray cup energy and like, and like gusto from like a week of, of, of celebrations and, and whatever. When I got home though, like it hit me hard. Like that, I, it took its toll on me. And like, I like had sore throat and like had to just sleep, sleep the whole week. But man, we just like, we just kept it together, man. We were just, we were just living off of that, uh, those gray cup fumes. It was awesome. Yeah. It was, it seemed like part of our duty as, as alumni, as the Tycott <laughs> audio network, as CFL ambassadors to just sort of, Make sure we're at every event and and you know close it down every event. And, we did, man. Uh, we weren't going to let them down. We did our duty yeah. really well. Yeah, we're we're you know that that was my eleventh Great Cup. Only only like sixth as a spectator, like partying or whatever. But um, I can't imagine how that what toll that would take on me if I ever got to fifty or or so, like some of the people we met this week. Oh yeah, I mean, and you 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 said you were you you. Uh, uh, hosted the uh, the uh, uh, Grey Cup, the fan base uh, uh, unveiling, and what fifty two years and and fifty, I think what the, what the guy was fifty nine, I think. Yeah, yeah, isn't that wild? Like haven't haven't missed a Grey Cup since uh, what did he say? Since since nineteen fifty nine, I think, or six, sixty one. Like, isn't that incredible? So sweet, man. That is so awesome. Yeah, that's Paul Hill, actually, who's uh who's um i was honored to be inducted in the plaza of honor with he he's a big builder in in saskatchewan who helped keep the team together in in tough times and mm. uh and also help build that stadium uh, and then lauren stewart was um the the fan recognized and his name's on top of the fan base um for his he was the 52nd year and he yeah. was there with his with his uh his daughter and granddaughter and mm. and that was a lot of fun uh, man, what a week though. What a week of just incredible positive energy throughout the city. Uh, you know, people, fans from, from wearing all colors throughout the league. Uh, of course, mostly black and gold, but, um, no, I didn't see of any negative aspects to the whole week. The CFL did a great job of, of creating this incredible festival, uh, like they always do, but especially in a time of such uncertainty, it was, it was very well done. And I was happy to be, you know, front and center for a lot of it. I got, I, I had some really cool, unique experiences and, uh, and for me, it was the most enjoyable great cup I'd been to. It was, it was an absolute blast, man. I, I can't wait for two years from now when it's right back here. And if, if Hamilton can, can find their way back into that game, we're just gonna have a repeat or well, a repeat of this week, but COVID free hopefully not a repeat of Sunday, but it was just a, like, it was just a unbelievable week. I like every day was just buzzing with energy. It was just, it was just exciting. And you're right. There was a lot of league energy, a league fanship, but of course, Hamilton kind of took the day with, uh, with their uh, amount of fanship and, and, and energy. But uh, 
two is tell me about some of these. You've been to 11 great cups. You've played in five. <laughs> and of course, you know, I don't not, <laughs> you got your, you got one victory and that's great. I personally had to have three losses to show and, and that's it. But <laughs> what, uh, what were some of your after great cup experiences, especially with, especially with a loss? Oh, um, they're all kind of hit differently for me, to be honest. Uh, I can, I, I feel the same way. I can attest to that. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I had a, I had a, I learned a lesson coming, you know, after, after winning in 2007 about not, not trying to dip out of town to go on vacation too early. I had to, I had to kind of rush home in a, in a snowstorm with, with no washer fluid, uh, uh, five days after the great cup and I'm driving like a three day drive through, through Manitoba and into, uh, Ontario and, and just basically following a transport truck as like a lead blocker through the mountains where, where the moose in the oh moose, uh, where all the moose are, because I couldn't barely see anything. Uh, so I learned my lesson not to, to sort of just let myself enjoy it and see, see how things come because, um, always cool things are going to come up. Uh, but, like 2009, 2010, 2013, 2014, after, after those losses, um, you know, <clears throat> we seem to, we seem to find a way to take, turn the somberness, even the night of the game into uh, a celebration of the season in some sense. Yeah. Um, so the team party, uh, you know, it was not wild by any means. It was, yeah, because you got your family and your friends there, the teams there, the coaches, um, and you know it's quiet and it's and it's you know just somber. But we were always able to find a way to sort of pick up the energy and uh, and, and and turn it into a fun night. And and that you know we don't just want to. We've spent we spent the last five, six, seven months together every single day sweating, bleeding, grinding, learning, uh, developing. And I don't want this to be the last time we see each other. And we're just going to, you know, some of these, some of these people you're never going to see again. Uh, some will be on different teams. Some will be back next year. You might not be back next year. So, um, we just had a, like a, a sense of, okay, let's, let's, uh, let's not forget like what we did this year, what we accomplished and, and, and how much work we put in together. So, that was always a bright spot for me. And, um, and, uh, and then I would probably normally like kind of take a month to sort of just let my body heal and get kind of get back, do some, some exercise and some stretching. But for me, it was all about trying to like return to the least amount of compensation patterns and the least amount of injury throughout December and then start training in the new year. Uh, of course, like enjoying the holiday season with your family and your friends. And um, so December was always sort of a month of, of rest and recuper recuperation for me. How about yourself? Yeah. yeah, I, well, certainly, certainly on your last point, the, uh, the nice thing about the CFL season to me is we always, it ended and we, and it's just right into the Christmas season. Right. So like you were like in, the NFL, you know, they blast, they play right through the holidays. And that was always, that's always sort of less, you know, festive it's just a nice time of the year to end uh just just before the the holidays start so i was always, i would unplug like big time like i would just mentally and physically uh have kind of nothing to do with football and then i would usually take a vacation in january and hit the ground running after that but uh but the the gray cup losses every one of them was different and i remember in 13 like it really wasn't even close and it was a home game for Sask and we were out there and I, had, that was my sixth game as a CFL player. And it was kind of just like, well, you know, really like super fun, like wish we played better and we didn't. So, you know, we just, you know, we, we'll, we'll, let's, let's just get back to it next year and have fun in 2014. That play was so, you know, I was so angry after that game about speedy B's touchdown being called back. And once that anger goes away, you know, we, 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 we had a fun night. We we're out in Vancouver. It was, you know, family was there. It was just a, you know, we got back to it again, but man, I'll tell you what, in 2019, I was so injured that year and we were so favored to win. There was actually a little bit like a feeling of almost like, 
uh, like being embarrassed almost like which is, sounds weird but it was like almost like like man that was so silly how like badly we played like what happened there we really uh, in a game where we weren't, weren't even really close but we were favored to win that was so frustrating <laughs> and i was had my family in calgary for the for the winnipeg breakup uh 2019 and we lost that game it was crappy there was uh, the, the sort of a scuffle happened in the hotel lobby with winnipeg fans and tie cat fans it was a strange little moment there and then ended up in the restaurant and i my dad was there and two was like i'm from buffalo <laughs> so like my dad is steve tasker like i i was i sat there with my dad at, at the steakhouse and i was like dad you lost four Super Bowls and I lost, uh, this is my third great cup of loss. Like what's wrong with us? <laughs> I was like, what, what is, what is wrong with us? And I, and I just was like, it, it was a real, that was a, that was a, a tough great cup, but, but I'll tell you, and you said it we, when you and I were together hours after the game on Sunday, this past Sunday. And you said, man, this hurts worse than 2014. And I, and I thought, wow, like that's, that's crazy that he can, that he's saying that. And, and, slowly and surely I woke up the next morning and I was just so sad. So sad. This, I went from anger, embarrassment. And then 2021 th this year, I was just sad for these guys, man. It was just heartbreaking and from top to bottom, but especially for me, the guys that are still there that you and I played with, that's so hard for me, but, but then coach O, Tommy, Jeff, all those guys just so sad. And like you said, now you and I are part of the, non-player ops side of the Thai Cats family. And I'm feeling for those guys too, Scott and Matt. I mean, it, it's, it's, it was, it was a hard day. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah. Not even being an arm's length from the team, but that this year we got closer to, to uh, uh, not, not, I guess not even the football, ops, not even the, the Berkeys and the Drews and, and the Car Claire's of the world, but like the, the uh the bob youngs and the and the kyles yeah. and the Lindsays and the and the wills and nicole's and, and and the list goes on and on and on but um uh just before we go any further luke you you're a champion in my books and uh <laughs> and your dad too you guys both touch a lot of people in in positive ways no matter what environment you're in so uh to me that's what life's all about and um and i'm sad that you never won a uh you know, a football championship, but um, still you guys have uh, a lot to celebrate and be proud of because, um, you know, your dad's still killing it on, on the airwaves and, and obviously a hall of famer in, in this, in the NFL and, and, uh, and you're right behind him. So we're, we're long, hoping this, this year, steps. this year's his year, man. We, he's, he's in the, uh, he's in the uh, last, the 15 man cut to be, uh, I think they announced it at the Super Bowl. So we'll see, man. He, people are, Oh, they Buffalo's jumped going. Gun. <laughs> yeah, no, Buffalo's going crazy for him though, man. They everyone's everyone's making a big Steve Tasker push right now, which is great to great to see. Cause yes, he is he's a he's a he's a one of a kind man. He's he's an all timer. But yeah, uh, I I appreciate that from you, man. It was we had some unbelievable years there together, and man, four out of the last eight years now, the Tie Cats have have been there and not been able to uh, to get a victory. And I I don't know I. I, I have this new identity now because as instead of a player with the Thai Cats audio network, and I got to say, I think our first inaugural season with, with the Thai Cats audio network was a success. I mean, we should probably let the listeners decide that and not just <laughs> assign that <laughs> on ourselves, but I, I can't help but think we did. This was fun, man. We had, this was a fun year to do this stuff. It, it was, and it, it, you know, just like reps in football, you know, the more I felt like the more, the more we did, the more uh, experience I had, I, I just got more comfortable. I, like, this is a personal thing. And, and I thought the whole team, we just were gelling more yeah. and more as the season went on. Um, we, we had a lot of special guests on. We, we created some cool content, but also kept it like consistent in a way that, that we could grow in, in, our, <clears throat> in our framework. And, uh, and yeah, Dave, Dave put on a great show and uh, our, our entire team, just like I was learning from, you know, obviously the most experienced, more experienced guys um, really, really taught me a lot, but even, even other fellow rookies like yourself, uh, just listening to you and the way you're delivering. <laughs> um, yeah, it was fun, man. It was fun. Awesome. It was learned a lot. And I look forward to seeing what the future brings. Dave Cadeau and RJ Broadhead, and then Jeff Giradat.
like long time, you know, Canadian uh, sports, like within in, in the broadcasting world in Canadian sports, like I, that's the three guys I was sitting next to as I was broadcasting the game. And it was just, it was awesome, man. Like they, like they were, they just guided me. Like all I had to do was just show up and they, and they, you know, just like made the show very, e- very, very much so easier for me. And yeah, super fun, man. For listeners, we're going to, of course, we're not going to pump out the content at, you know, like we did for our mid season uh, or, you know, our playoff pace here or, or, or mid or regular season pace. Obviously there's just not much, not as much tie cats content happening in the football world, but we'll, we'll have, we'll have some things throughout the off season. I think, what do you think too? I mean, let's have some guests on, let's have some former teammates, some, uh, some CFL names. I think it'd be fun to, we'll, we'll do this every now and again through the off season too. Yeah. I mean, uh, like Louis and David Butko were doing a great job as well with the team. And, uh, and um, we had some guests on throughout the year and we saw a, a ton of people last week that we, you know, we were just talking. I remember we're saying we got to get these guys on the network and that during the off season would be a perfect time and yeah. just tell some different stories and, and get some groups together of people that know each other. Um, that sounds, that sounds perfect, man. I look forward to our next uh, encounter and, uh, in the meantime, you know, of course, happy holidays and happy new year and, and recover up, uh, <laughs> sleep, yep. sleep it off. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Well, good stuff, man. All the best to the family. Let's, uh, get through the holidays here. Tie cat, uh, tie cat, uh, nation. And we'll, we'll, we'll press onward into 2022 and, and, uh, for all the good things to come at that point twos, you're the man. It was, it was awesome. Have a great uh, holiday season and, and, uh, we'll touch base after. Cheers, brother. Love you, Ben. Love that.